In Sologne, people say that a good winter precedes a good spring. It looks like a good spring is on its way. The heavy snow and frequent rain have brought the Chambord ponds back to life. After a long winter spent in the woods, the deer are on the move again. They are searching for a new place to graze. The Cousson River, which passes through the park, doesn't prevent the animals from moving to fresh pastures. Underneath the oak tree, we find a carpet of acorns that were buried by the snow. Spring brings many surprises. Whatever the season, the boars find food, acorns, insects, fish. They'll eat anything and everything. The cuckoo acts as if he is the phoenix of the forest. However, the osprey is the symbol of Chambord. This magnificent raptor is sacred in these grounds. France counts about 30 pairs of ospreys. Seven are at Chambord. They are the most protected species in the park. At one point, they had disappeared from France and only existed in Corsica. They came back to central France in 1985. Having migrated to Africa for the winter, this pair of ospreys have returned to nest here. They have found the nest that they had the year before, but this isn't enough to keep them together. The male osprey woos his partner by bringing her fish from the nearby Loire River. Food offerings from the male to the female are made in preparation for mating. Mating starts the beginning of a coupling that will last for several months. In April, the female lays two or three eggs that are then incubated for 40 days. For the next two months, they will bring fish to the nest to feed their young. There are many species of animals at Chambord. Two types of these animals are regulated, the deer and the wild boar. The park cannot accommodate any more than 600 boars. Hunts take place in order to control and preserve the park's ecosystem. The deer population is controlled by trapping and occasional shootings. A family of badgers make their way out of the burrow as the day comes to an end.
More often than not, they wait for nightfall. The tawny owl observes the action. Badgers live in large families. The mother lives with the young in a burrow system that has around six or seven entries. The father lives nearby. The young badgers make the most of these excursions out of their underground burrows. They run around and play games. Nighttime is dedicated to finding food. The bulk of their diet is made up of earthworms, but they also feed on small frogs, mushrooms and carrion. Most of the Chambord animals dwell in the natural parkland, but some prefer the forest of castle turrets and chimneys. The numerous window sills come in all shapes and sizes, and many of them are suitable for nest building. A pair of kestrels have made this high up spot their luxury residence. The surrounding meadows are filled with rodents. Kestrels nest in high places where they can't be disturbed. They have found a hidden ledge in this maze of stone and the female will soon lay four to five eggs. There are only five or six pairs of kestrels at Chambord. Why so few? Because it is a forest park and they need an open habitat with acres of grassland in order to feed their young. When hunting, the kestrel hovers above its territory. It remains stationary despite the wind and surveys the hunting ground below. It's been three months since the pair of Shambo ospreys mated. They have had two chicks. Their offspring won't remain anonymous for long. The male is getting anxious because every year, in late spring, an intruder climbs into his lair. He tries everything he can to get rid of the invader. He even throws a freshly caught fish at him. Ospreys are extremely rare in France and a protection project has been put in place in the Loire and Cher region 
in order to monitor the species. At just two months old, they already have a good peck. In another 10 days, they will be ready to learn to fish and fly. Zero. Aussi bien à la peser. 1540. 1540. They are the only birds that are weighed and ringed. Two other chambord symbols, the short toe eagle and the booted eagle, do not undergo this ritual. Disconcerting. The young ospreys are returned to their parents. It is now possible to know whether or not they return to nest in the park. Oak forests, glades, meadows, thickets, water. The Chambord ecosystem is representative of French nature. This park that is as large as Paris reminds us that nature has no boundaries. Rare birds such as the black stork choose to dwell here. There are about 30 pairs in the whole of France. The laws of nature must be obeyed. This motto is the foundation of the Chambord heritage policy. Each year, a landscape project is put in place. For example, they might decide to dedicate a certain area for nesting birds or create a new pond to attract a declining species. Whilst boars require constant hydration, their pond trips are also dedicated to mud baths. The only way for them to get rid of parasites is to wallow in mud baths by digging out the earth. It also allows them to regulate their temperature as they do not sweat. Wild boars are prolific breeders. Each saw will usually produce one litter of four to eight piglets per year and therefore will double her brood on an annual basis. During their first six months, wild boar piglets have a striped fur. Each sounder consists of three to four females and their offspring that are less than a year old. The eldest saw in the sounder is the chief. She is the first in heat and the rest then follow suit. She decides where the group dwell and which ponds they should and shouldn't drink at. This matriarchal structure is also present in deer herds.
Each doe and her fawn from the previous year form a trio, and there are several of these basic family units in each herd. The herd has a leader and a hierarchy that all of the doe conform to. For the first two years, the fawns are dependent on their mother to teach them everything, including how to select plants to eat. They then become pre-adolescent. The females are called doe and the males are called stags. It's the end of May and the boars begin their spring molt. They start to lose the thick layer of fur that covers them during winter. They then shed their manes and their tails. During the period after the young piglet has shed his striped fur, and before he has become a black beast, he has a reddish coloured fur for around six months and is called the red beast. Throughout the spring, the deer have been eating to build their strength and replenish their antlers. By early July, their new antlers have grown and are sheathed in a fine grey velvet-like membrane. The velvet covers the antlers as it grows and provides it with blood and supplies it with oxygen and nutrients. They gradually shed the velvet covering and expose their new antlers. Hierarchies are re-established and they start to prepare for the rutting season. Well, we all go through a gangly stage before we discover our own style. There have been a series of floods and showers between spring and summer. This is nothing to complain about, least of all for the deer, as they require rich vegetation in order to breastfeed their young and to build their strength ahead for rutting season. These are the last showers before the summer heat arrives. The park is luminous and the castle is resplendent. As the heavy heat sets in, the animals start to converge around the ponds, including those who don't usually frequent the water. The atmosphere is tranquil and serene, until the wild boars arrive and things get a little more animated. The young piglets do not yet know how much fun a mud bath can be. They wade calmly with their mother until she has finished washing herself and they then head back.
The time has come. Rutting season has started. The young deer are left feeling strange and exhilarated by the hoarse cries of the large stags. The young stags instinctively know that they shouldn't enter the rutting area as they could be killed. But what do they do with this electricity that is flowing around their bodies? The young stag still has a relatively lean frame, a slender neck and young antlers. In a year or two he will be sexually mature, but he is not yet ready to mate. He will need to wait for another six or so years. Meanwhile, he can only observe. The rut begins. An opponent is heard stirring in the bushes. He rubs the soil with his antlers and shows that he is ready to battle. During the three-week rutting season at Chambord, the foresters observed the deer from dawn to dusk. Last year, they observed 85 males during rutting season. A 12-horned stag has been spotted in this meadow. The foresters sketch the antlers of the large deer. They use these drawings to identify the males because from one year to another, the antler shape doesn't really change. Many of the deer at Chambord have antlers with 12, 14, 16 or more horns. It's a good sign since the size of the antler reflects the health of the deer and the quality of its habitat. The deer were the first inhabitants of the Chambord kingdom and are the most magical creatures that roam here. Enthusiasts have worked at Chambord during the rutting season for the last 35 years. This extraordinary natural kingdom in the heart of France exists, and that is thanks to the king. He was as much an artist and a dreamer as he was a hunter and a warrior. King Francois I was an environmentalist ahead of his time. The exquisite Chambord Nature Park serves not only to inspire us today, but will do so for many years to come. Mm -hmm.